as we segue now to worst take, and, and shout out to everybody, man, who's been submitting these worst takes. We got to put some more people up here on the Summer Jam screen. This was from NBA Today yesterday. And they were talking about better chance to make it to the NBA Finals next season. The 76ers or the New York Knicks. Now let's listen to what veteran writer and Hall of Famer Mark Spears had to say in regards to the cores. Here, here was Mark Spears, NBA Today. Here we go. The Knicks that have a better opportunity. Oh, Sixers. They got Joe and B. They got the three best players amongst the two teams. Okay. The three best whoa, players whoa, over whoa, Jalen Brunson? Jalen Brunson, you're whoa. taking Paul George and Tyrese Maxey and Joel Embiid over Jalen Brunson. Whoa, child. All right, somewhere that is going to be a... He already knew he messed up. Josh Hart... <laughs> Josh Hart perpetually him. online. So this he, is a hard he, one. He, he knew we messed up, man. I mean, take take oh, take a look at his uh, t- take a look at my man Mark Spears. Take a look at his face right here. This right here. You see you see how he folded. You see how he folded like that. That right there is a Knicks for clicks motion right there. You see that? You see how he he tried to keep that that smirking. That right there is a Knicks for clicks. I'm trying right now to, to stir the pot. He let the cat out the bag. He put all the chip. He folded his hand. Come on, Mark. I mean, this right here qualifies for the worst. He's in the Hall of Fame as a writer. This qualifies for a worst take Hall of Fame. Because he couldn't even say it with a straight face. If you want to give me Joel Embiid over Brunson, fine. He's already won the MVP. He's a two-way player. I, I like two-way players a lot more. I give the the uh, I, I'll I'll defer to the two-way player, star player, any day of the week. And when healthy, Joel Embiid's a dominant player. But Maxi, good player, star on the rise. He's not yet Jalen Brunson. Paul George. At 34 years old, you're going to take Paul George over Jalen Brunson? The guy who got votes for MVP this year? Second team All-NBA? Come on, Mark. You're a Hall of Fame writer, man. Look at the smirk. Like my guy Martin would say, that's a, bull- <laughs> that's a bullheaded lie right there. Where are my Martin fans at in the chat? And this is fitting for Mark Spears. That's a bullheaded lie. I'll give you, I'll give you Embiid when healthy. But Maxi and Paul George, give me a break. I mean, I mean, who did Mark Spears vote for All NBA this season? Who did Mark Spears vote for? Because I don't see anyone named Tyrese Maxey. I don't see anyone named Paul George on the second team or the third team. And I don't see Joel Embiid on any one of these because guess what? What do you know? He's always hurt. So at the end of the day, Brunson wins. I mean, this is a Hall of Fame writer, ladies and gentlemen. Ball-headed lie. Come on, little boss man in the chat, man. Come on, man. Mark Spears, you got to do better than that, man. And, and you know he does. He did not want to tow the company line. Look at this right here. He did not want to tow the company line. But because that show and that network has to try to stir the pot with Knicks fans to get extra attention, they brought him along for it. And he folded. That's a Knicks for clicks fold right there. All right, so that's our guy Mark Spears, the worst take candidate of the year. Put him in the Hall of Fame. Then we have our friend Draymond Green. Now, many of you guys know Draymond Green was supposed to appear here on this show a couple of months ago. And he folded. He ran. He he ran. Quicker than Usain Bolt. Record. On the day he was supposed to show up 30 minutes before our appearance, our podcast. He ran away. Like a coward. But anyway, let, let's see what let's see what riveting comment he had to say about the Knicks 
and their build. Let's head over to uh, Draymond Green and hear what he have to say if anybody cares. Here we go. But what just happened with the trade was that, you know, if this doesn't work in two to three years, um, the Knicks will be rebuilding again because they traded all their picks away and then they'll be trying to, like, trade those guys to get picks back in. And that's kind of how it all plays out. And uh, I'm sorry to the Knicks fans, but that's how I actually think it's going to play out. And I don't, but. Yeah, that one was short. That's cap. It's complete cap. I, I don't buy that for one second that this is a short window, two to three year project for the Knicks. This is a young team in their prime. They just signed OG Adenobi to his deal. Brunson is about to get his deal. Mikal Bridges is about to get his deal. Those are your guys. That is going to be your core. Hart will most likely be here after his deal. And maybe DiVincenzo. The only person who I'm 50-50, it could be 50-50 on if he's back, just based on fit, production, contract, second apron, is Julius. We'll see what happens with Randall. But for the most part, these guys are all in their prime. This is not Golden State at the end of their run. The Knicks are in their prime, made great moves, and they are ready to contend. But we got to be patient with this. See, this is another microwave take. This is why all the people who try to split up the Boston Celtics and Tatum and Brown are now eating crow after these guys are raising the Larry O'Brien trophy. You got to give it time for these builds to marinate, man. The Knicks have one thing right now for certain, and that is a bona fide playoff scorer, a bona fide playoff producer. If Julius Randle can prove the same next year, the Knicks are on their way. Trust and believe. And with the added parity around the league now with the second apron dismantling teams, they have as good a chance as any within the next five years to raise it themselves. Because I'm putting them right up there in the top three with the Celtics. I'm putting them up there too. We'll see what Philly does around that that team. Philly's going to be dangerous. We'll, we'll respect that. I'll respect that. But this next team is built to run. But you got to have patience. It took Tatum and Brown six, seven years to get it. It took Boston some, some tinkering to get it. We grow spec the owner of the Boston Celtics after they got embarrassed by the Heat last year. He said, you know what? We're not running this thing back. Go get me Porzingis. Go get me uh, Drew Holiday. And they ran all the way to the chip. Third highest net rating in NBA history. 64 and, and 18 on the campaign. Thought 13 and 3 in the playoffs. Or 13 and 2, something, something crazy in the playoffs. You got to give it time. But see, what the media wants to do is they want to put the championship. It's got to be championship this year. It's got to be championship. It's got to be championship or else they failed at everything. No, 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 no. Knock it off. This Knicks team is not the Phoenix Suns. This is not the Golden State Warriors. This is not the Lakers. This Knicks team is set. They are building to to win it and build for the long term. But that's Draymond Green, Mr. New Media, yap in his mouth. And then you got Mark Spears with the ball-headed lie. You guys be the judge, man. That was... Another segment of Worst Take. Everybody in the chat, my, my franchise channel members, go ahead and throw a Worst Take emoji in the chat, man. 